Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into things we love. I'm joined, I'm just going to go, I'm joined today by Dave Ellswick. I'm so happy you're here, Dave. Yeah, I'm a geek and a nerd. Yay! I'm both. A lot of people don't know that about me. They don't. They think that you're just I mean, a political. I mean, when we're not, when, yeah. listen, when I'm not talking politics, I'm talking movies and yeah. specific movies at that. And you started doing on your show every now and then. Yeah. Like we've, we we've had done the Geek a couple Squad times yesterday. The geek, yeah, the Geek stuff yesterday. So Four weeks we'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. So yesterday you had Mitch Breitweiser yeah, on. Yeah. That was cool to get artist. Mitch in. Yeah. I got to get Elizabeth in too. Yeah. They're both. She is folks. such a sweetheart and I really want to get her back on. But she is very, very, very to herself. Yeah. Yeah. Well,. And Mitch, to some extent, is. well, he is yeah. very much too. And yeah. and after, and we won't get into it, but after what happened over the last, yeah. I don't know, three four months, they're even more so. Now. Yeah, I don't blame them. And I no, I don't. I yeah. wouldn't blame them. They want didn't want to come on Not my any, show at all, at all. Yeah, because it deals in politics. Yeah, that whole thing was crazy. But, yes, uh, it was. But anyway, yeah. Um, if you, folks, if you just if you don't know by some chance, Dave Ellswick is uh, been in radio for. He's forgotten more about radio than I'll ever know, but just here in Arkansas, you've been on the air about 20 years, right? I've been uh, in September, it'll be 17. 17, okay. Yeah. And you can catch him right here on 96.5 FM, The Answer, Monday through Fridays on uh, at 2 o'clock, 2 to 6, and it's not, it is uh, political talk radio, but he does a lot of other topics too, not just political talk radio, but in my opinion, I mean, it's the best political talk radio around, so check it out. All right, so anyway, uh, I'll get to my housekeeping notes, and then what we're going to be doing today... And you knew you do need to do some house cleaning. I do. I know Dude, it's terrible you slobber over here. terrible. I know, on it's, the- it's awful. Yeah, I'm just... It's it's a mess over here. So, um, really bad. And this is where you normally sit, so I need to make sure to clean it up That's for okay. Yeah. That's all right. Um, anyway, I'll do some housekeeping notes, but today what we're going to do, after the news segment is Dave and I are going to count down our top five most anticipated geek movies of 2017. This would have been so much easier if you said 10. 10? Well, but we don't have time. No, I know. Yeah, you said, I had to You do said it. five, yeah. and, and I just, I mean, seriously, I just changed my yeah, list. number five. There's some, there are some movies I left off my top five. I'm literally weeping inside. Yes, I am too. Yeah, so, all right. Uh, and in speaking of anticipated geek movies, if anybody out there wants to chime in, this is live geek talk radio. It's the only geek talk radio I know of out there. Uh, it may, you know, maybe in like New York or LA or something. I don't know anything else going on around here. Um, so in one of the reasons I do that, so it can be interactive. So you feel free to call in at 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. Or you can tweet me at Shane plays S H A N E P L A ys during the show um and sometimes you know it's very active and then sometimes sometimes the topics i think will generate listener feedback don't and then some stuff i I don't think it'll generate any i get a lot so it's just i never can anticipate but feel free to um to give us feedback on your geek movies if you want um the show notes for today's show right now are up at shameplays.com s-h-a-n-e-p-l-a-y-s.com and you can uh, get a link to uh, it'll it'll show all the news items from today. You can get a link to Dave's show, learn more about Dave. So go check that stuff out. Last week's show is archived on the blog and the podcast. Talk to uh, Pixel Metal indie video game developer Pixel Metal about their game Sombrero. And this show, I love radio. I love live radio. There's an energy to it that a podcast will never do. But I love podcasts as well. And this show does go out as a podcast uh, a few days after the live show on my blog. At shameplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and more. And last but not least, we are we also carried a week delayed on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. Kryptonradio.com, and we play on Saturdays and Mondays, a week delayed on Krypton Radio. Go to kryptonradio.com and check out the show schedule for the times. And just for the sake of time, I'm just going to press right on. And get into the to the news here so that we can get through the news and then have as much time as possible to count down our movies. Um, Zach, turn on the secret microphone in the newsroom, buddy. Oh, can you believe these guys work on Saturday, Dave? They're, it's good that they do. Yep, they work on we Saturday. We appreciate it. The 24-hour news cycle. You yeah, can't yeah, get away good. from it. And folks, remember, for every dollar of Patreon support, 
that the show gets, uh, the news team gets a penny an hour raise. What a deal. <laughs> All right. So uh, moving right in. Now, I've got mainly uh, I've got mainly movie news today because we're counting down movie news or we're counting down movies. But I do have one video game related news item simply because this is a big deal. And Zach, have you been paying attention to this? The Nintendo Switch details are out now, the new Nintendo console. I haven't. All right. Well, the new Nintendo console has finally been revealed. The price is going to be 299 What a big surprise. Yeah, 299 Everybody else's is 299 Yeah, 299 and it's going to be launching March 3rd. So the Switch is, the Wii U bombed, okay? Even though it sold like 16 million units, the most recent Nintendo console did not do well. So okay. this one, it's, it's a weird console in that it's a home console and it's a portable console. So you can play it at home or you can pick it up and take it with you. Okay. Okay. And it's it's a lot of people, you know, are excited about what they're seeing. And uh, they're, you can pre-order it, you know, uh, Amazon, Target, whatever. But there's a news item. And I'll, I'll talk more about this on another show because this is a pretty big deal to a lot of people in the video game world. But a lot of people are excited about the games they're seeing on it. But main just want to let people know in case they hadn't heard yet, the Nintendo Switch has officially been announced at two hundred and ninety nine dollars and it will be launching March third. Okay, before you get into yeah. the games, can I suggest that they'll be family friendly? Uh, yeah, and that's what Nintendo's known Th- that's for. That's what they're known for. Yeah, they they I mean they will occasionally have some darker M rated games, but it's such a small percentage of you know, they want this to be a central family living room thing. They are the yeah. point of yeah. game systems. Yeah. They're, you know, the Wii, you know, the point. <laughs> the, Rock and roll, safe for your family. Safe for family. The, uh, oh, is that, is that, that, was that what their tagline that is? That was for point? a long time. For, okay, life. yeah. I was, I was like, I know that has something to do with the point. And that was kind of jingling in the back of my mind. But um, but anyway, yeah, so that's, that's all Nintendo Switch. We'll talk more about that later in another show so let's get to the news uh for the movies and you know we were talking dave you and uh me and and zach and they're running the starship enterprise the board in there uh justice league the dc movies i still think have a chance to pull it out i'm going to tell you what they better do justice league right or they better do it justice they better yeah, do Justice, they better League, do Justice. Justice yeah. or they're done. And that's what we were talking about before the show was that there's still a lot of goodwill for the characters and, mm-hmm. and for people wanting DC to succeed with their movies that if they do Justice League right, they can pull out of the dive they're in and Wonder Woman, right? Because people love the characters, but they haven't been really happy with the dark tone and, and whatnot of the movies. But... They released, and this is a news item. You said you already saw this, Dave. There's a news item uh, from Gizmodo linked on the show notes. Justice League photo finally it's unites the team. One, it's too. a good photo. It's got Batman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Flash, and Aquaman. Sort See, of in Cyborg, this, I wish yeah. they wouldn't put it in there, but everybody else I like. Well, you know, they've made him. Let's. There's that picture right there, Dave. I don't know if you can see yeah, it from I over see. there. Uh, that, we were talking about that before the show, too. You know, Cyborg, just for the past few years, they you know, DC has wanted to make him a primary Justice League member, so I guess he's here to stay. I don't dislike Cyborg, but I prefer him as a Team Titans or a Titans member. Yes. But that picture looks cool. And the point is, when you look at that picture and you get excited of them all standing together looking bad, and bad isn't good, uh, <laughs> then, you know, it shows there's still potential for them to pull it out. Look, yeah. Flash... I love him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Love him. Yeah. Uh, you've got uh, Aquaman. Like Aquaman. Now, I'm going to be honest. I like Nemo better, but I like Aquaman. Aquaman's good. Yeah. All right. I like Superman. Yeah. I like Batman. Yeah. I like Wonder Woman. Yeah. Who doesn't? That's strong, man. Right. So they've got, it's theirs to lose is what I'm saying. Yes, it is. I mean, they've got it. They just have to not blow it. And, you know, with the darker tone of the movie so far, they're just... It fits Batman, but it doesn't fit any of the other characters. It's going to be know? interesting because Aquaman, they've made him real dark. They have. They've and get, he's not dark at all in the com- in the comics. He's trip. really not. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do. Now, they have in the comics recently, in the past few years, played up more of his king. Like, I'm a king, and sometimes i got to make hard decisions yeah. because I'm a king. Right. But yeah, he's not dark. Aquaman's never been dark. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, 
Folks, if you haven't seen that picture yet, go to the show notes page, shameplays.com. Check out this picture of the Justice League all standing together, the movie version, and it looks great. And it's no secret. Yeah, will, will they have Aquaman talk to the dolphins? I'm hoping he's going to go. Doo, 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 That's doo, what I'm doo, saying. Is little, it, you know, are they going to show the waves the going through waves the water? Going out of his head. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Zach? Have you seen this picture? I, I'm looking at it right now. What do you think? Does that excite you? Yeah, it's pretty that's cool. That's what I'm picture. talking about. Yeah. There's still so sh- that's why I don't think we'll see the waves going through the water. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Maybe they'll like have the Like the cartoon, sound. man. Maybe they'll have the sound. So, yeah. all right. Anyway, I doubt that, too. And there's no secret. It's no secret that Superman's going to be in it. Yes. Okay. We don't know at what point or when, but he's going to be in it, and he's probably going to be in a but black wait, suit when he I first returns. I thought he was dead. Yeah, well, he, yeah, Doomsday killed him. Well, you know that if you die in the comics, you stay dead, right? Yeah. There's no After, possible you way can't for you come to come back. back. You can't. Just like you couldn't in Dallas either. Yeah. <laughs> well, they would just say the whole season was a dream. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And you, and you, he'll wake up in the shower. Yeah, that's what will happen. So, all right. <laughs> With Lois, if was I know Bobby? them now. Was that Bobby? Yes, was it was Bobby. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're showing, our, <laughs> we're showing our pop culture age there, Ellswick. All right. Uh Moving right along, this is interesting. The re- the next three news items are about uh, Star Wars and Rogue One. Oh, cool. Yeah. Here's, this is interesting. There's a sequel to it, right? Yeah. George Lucas has been confirmed as the director <laughs> for, the, uh, uh, for the sequel so to Rogue excited, One. So get excited, man. George, George Lucas is, has been confirmed. I can't believe he's coming out of retirement. Yeah, it's greenlit, and all, all the... Uh, <laughs> All the all the buzz is people are just going to love it. It's going to be a worldwide. I think smash. it's going to be good. Yeah, I hear that smash. the scroll at the very beginning will refer to Rogue One, the Rogue One yeah, movie. So there's going to be some continuity. Okay. <laughs> well, I hear that. You know, I anyway. I hope it's going to be good. So anyway, I hope that a new Star Wars movie is going to be good. Okay, moving right along. I'm sorry. No, no I'm, I'm jumping I'm, in. That's here. why you're here, Dave. That's Go why ahead. you're here. Go do your to thing, be Dave. Go do your uh, thing. So China is a major movie market now. That's why Warcraft was made. It was did terrible. Sure. It did terrible in but the United it did States. Good. It did three hundred and fifty million dollars in China alone. Yeah, did great. So we'll probably get another one. Yes. But so movies these days are being made for not just the domestic market, but for the overseas market. Yes. Okay. And Rogue One is as has done well overseas except in China. It hasn't been released in China. No, it has. Oh, has it yeah, not been it released? It hasn't done well. Oh, that's uh, interesting. It only made uh, $30.6 million in its first weekend. So what they're saying is, and in fact, they put Donnie Chin and, uh, oh, who was the guy that played Donnie Chin's buddy there? Yeah, I know uh, who you're talking about. D- uh, let's see. Um, Zhang Wen? Yeah. Donnie Chin and Zhang Wen were but were buddies in Rogue One. Right, they're big names in China. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Donnie they, is. Yeah, well, they so they were kind of thinking maybe that's why they put them in the movie to appeal to China, but it just didn't. Like they're saying that most people went that went to see Rogue One because of those two actors. Kind of came out kind of like, well, I love the parts they were in, but everything else bored me. Yeah, nothing else made sense. Yeah, so the the the, <laughs> the cultural roots of star wars are not china doesn't have that same point of reference that we do now you want to know the one that's going to do big in china what's that the wall yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. well wasn't there some... even though even though you got a white guy playing playing yeah. the, uh, the one of the major parts when from what i've read about the movie uh he gets his butt kicked a lot by the chinese right so it'll be interesting to see it yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah, that it'll movie. Be good. That yeah. almost made my top five. Re- almost, really? Al- ah. Almost. Came right. close. Well, here's how they're spinning this, or at least analyzing why it's not doing well in I China. I wasn't that brave to pick it fifth. The, you, the, you wasn't that brave? <laughs> my, yeah. my, my fifth pick is, is kind of brave. Uh, but it, well, it's, it's risky, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so this is kind of what they're saying. They're saying, and this is from uh, therap.com. The uh, the first news item about Nintendo Switch was from Polygon, and the, and the one Justice League photo was from Gizmodo. But this article is from The Wrap, and they're saying that the original Star Wars films first came out in the 70s and 80s when China's movie market was closed. Remember, this is a communist country, right? It's, it's opening up more, but it's a communist country. Uh, and most of its audience's first exposure to Star Wars was from the prequels. So imagine that that's your point of reference for Star Wars is the prequels. 
and then Rogue One comes along, and it's just not that big of a deal. So that that's I'm wondering if future Star Wars movies are going to do even more stuff to try to break China. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, okay, this we were talking about this scene before the show. Me and Dave and Zach. There were, a, and this is a, a a article from Collider. You can go to the show notes at shameplays.com and find it. Darth Vader's scene, that scene that really in some ways made Rogue One, when Darth Vader, and then the lightsaber flashes, yeah. and then he just starts mowing down the rebels. When he's walking down yeah, through the that ship. That was the last minute edition. That was, was not part of the original. They went back and added that. Well, you had to have that be, yeah. if, if you were going to really have the continuity that you needed going into uh, New Hope. Right. Yeah. I, I, mean, I love. That I, was a fantastic scene. I, I, yeah. I went home after seeing Rogue One with my family, yep. sat them down, pulled out my DVD of it. New Hope, and yeah. made them watch the beginning of it. And they all looked at me and go, Dad, you're a geek. <laughs> But deep down, they're like, "That is awesome." Yeah, it yeah. makes sense now. It, it totally fits. I mean, it's 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 a it's a perfect. In fact, we had Michael Brown on the show a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about Rogue One, and he saw online before Disney swooped on it, where somebody took a bootleg of the ending of Rogue One and put it together, and put it together with the beginning of A New Hope. It's seamless, and it was seamless. Yeah, so, it really is. Yeah, it's seamless. Yeah, it's seamless. So they did a. And now, evidently, according to this article from Collider, the scene where the some people call it the Rebel Blockade Runner, some people call it the Tanto Four uh-huh. Princess Leia's ship, right. when it drops and blast engines and takes off, that was originally in the movie. But the scene where Darth Vader was mowing Hacking people everybody. down, yeah, that was added. Now the scene where he, uh, when you go to his castle on Mustafar, right. That was originally in the movie. Okay. I love that when yeah, he was in too. when he was in the uh, the container and yeah, all that. Back the tank. Well, that, that, notice- was, that was a perfect seamless to the one before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Where because he was damaged yeah. after uh, the, number uh, three. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, well, they had. Um, yeah, no, no. He was totally damaged. Yeah, that, that He's suit in is not just armor; it's life support. Yeah, it's pieces. Yeah, Darth yeah, Vader's he was in armor is also life support. That's why he goes. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, um, <laughs> these aren't the droids we're looking yeah. for. Sorry. All right. I'll I stop. love it. Um, but here's another little thing that I didn't catch till it was pointed out to me. Every time they showed a planet in Rogue One, they put the name of the planet in letters mm-hmm. up on the screen. Right. Did you notice they didn't do that at Mustafar? And they did that on purpose because That's right. if they said Mustafar, people would immediately know. Oh, this is Darth Vader's. But they wanted people to be surprised, surprised by, by the, the the castle that and Darth sense. Vader. Yeah. So mm-hmm. next time you watch it, notice that they didn't put Weren't Mustafar you, down there. But wasn't it kind of interesting when you see that scene? It, it's like, oh, Dracula. Yeah. No, that's the point. It was supposed to be like that. He's the Dark Lord where, of the where, Sith. Where Where are the dire wolves and yeah. stuff? Well, he's literally living. He's reigning in hell, literally. I mean, you know, Darth Vader is not living a good life. No, he was yeah, not. Yeah, he's, you know. Um, all right. And not until the Empire Strikes Back. Not until the Empire. That was his, That's when he got his goods. And yeah. Yep. So anyway, all right. Some other stuff. Now, that's not part of this article, but other stuff I've read about reshoots. They reshot a lot of the end of Rogue One, including changing how a lot of the characters died. Supposedly, there's some video floating around of it. Hmm. I don't know. They also added the scene... Where uh, where uh, Cassian shoots the guy in the alley, mm-hmm. and the scene where they rescue Jen out of that troop carrier, yeah, because they before that they went from Jen being a little girl and rescued by Saw, okay, to the very next scene, it's that meeting on the base where that would have been too bro- that, uh, abrupt. Well, that's what I'm saying. Jump. Yeah, they right. said the first time you meet Cassian and an adult Jen was in that meeting, so wow. they had to go flesh that out. Yeah, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. But amazing, you know, usually when you hear a movie's doing reshoots, that means because the movie's in trouble. Mm. But this made it stronger. Mm-hmm. I mean, they made a much stronger movie. Can, can I say one other thing that I thought yeah. was kind of interesting? Yeah. That they left it in that movie, and you look at it now and you go, "Why? Why are they still using floppy disks?" Yeah. I mean, they, right. used, they well, they came up with the reason why. Oh, did they? Well, what I'm saying is they. I uh, mean, they wanted it for the continuity. Yeah, they well, the size 
of the data was so huge. That's kind of what they implied by okay. this is such a huge. That's why they had such a problem getting it out because the size of the data was so huge. That sounds. But correct. you had to have yeah. a floppy disk for them to pass it on, so it could be passed on to Leia. Yeah, they had to come up with a reason why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway. Because, yeah, we all know that. I mean, you got galaxy wide Wi Fi by the time of Star Wars, right? I would Come think on. so. Come on. AT&T's gotten it together by then. And oh, no, it was a long time ago. AT&T wasn't even around. That's I, why. Yeah, I would think that it would have been. There was no uh, Comcast. How shall we say? Unlimited. Unlimited. Yep. <laughs> all right. Anyway, final news item. Then we'll wrap and uh, cut to a break. And when we come back, we'll go to our top five most anticipated geek movies of 2017 Lucasfilm, Disney, everybody has come out and been very clear that they will not digitally recreate Carrie Fisher for future Star Wars movies. That's not the story I saw. Oh, what did you see? The story I saw is that Disney was working with the heirs uh, of the Fisher estate to be able to use her in future endeavors. Well, from what I understood, and I'll need to go read again, but what I understood... They're they're working with the estate so that they can still use the character of Princess Leia, mm-hmm. but they're they're not going to do the digital Grand Moff Tarkin recreation thing like they did from Rogue One. That's from what I understand. I don't believe it. All right, we'll see. But that's they've what been saying. working towards this yeah. for thirty years. Well, let's now. see what this is on Entertainment Weekly. Uh, we don't normally respond. This is Lucas Arts or Lucas Film. We don't normally respond to fan or press speculation, but there is a rumor circulating we like to address. We want to assure our fans that Lucasfilm has no plans to digitally recreate Carrie Fisher's performance as Princess or General. They don't, but what about Disney? Yeah, that's what it comes down to. (laughs) I just said, if Disney wants it, Disney's going to get it. All right. Well, anyway, so that's that's the news. That's all the news that's fit to print or to air or to talk about for this this week on Shame Place. We're going to cut to a break. When we come back, Dave and I are going to go through our top five most anticipated geek movies of 2017. Take us to a break, Zach. Comic book lovers, visit thewildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book. It's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The Die is Cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure, where dragons lie, and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trollord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk radio a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. I'm joined by my buddy and uh, just huge radio veteran, really the guy that got me into radio and mentors me, Dave Ellsworth. Hey. 
Dave. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for being here, Dave. It's it's. Taken, I appreciate yeah. the uh, invitation. Yeah, one of these days, uh, you know, if you want, you can. If I'm out of town or something, I'll let you. If you're if you're into this, you can host the show sometime. Might do it sometime. To. Yeah, might do. But you're always welcome as a guest. So, um, top it, five. Now. Top five. We're going to do our top five uh, anticipated geek movies of 2017. If anybody wants to pitch in or chime in, it's five zero one eight two three zero nine six five. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. Now, I want to set this up just a little bit. Here was my criteria. All right. Because there's a lot of great movies coming out. And there's movies I left off the list that I'm hurting that I had to leave them off. I'm losing geek cred for them not being on the list. You go. All right. It had to be a movie that I absolutely have to see. And I want to see it in the theater. Okay. So All those right. are my two criteria. All right. And and I put a couple of links up on the show notes, but in fact, I sent you these links last night by text, a couple of news articles that go through upcoming geek movies. That helped me go through and make my initial list, uh, but people can find those on the show notes. And then from there, I was like, there's too many movies. So I had to come up with our crime criteria. Let me give you an example of a couple of movies that did not make my list. That doesn't mean I want I don't want to see them, and it doesn't mean I won't see them in the theater, but it means that... Uh, these others, like, I've got to see them, and i got to see them in the theater. Okay? All right. All right. So, here's an example of a couple of movies that didn't make it. Ghost in the Shell. Okay. I want to see that movie. That's a cool geek movie to see. But I don't... It got beat out by other movies that I have to see in the theater. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay? Lego Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to see, I want to see that okay. really bad. All right. But I don't have to see that in the theater. Gotcha. Uh, and, the, and then, believe it or not, Guardians of the Galaxy got beat out. Wow. Yeah. I want to absolutely see that movie. Wow. Yeah. I absolutely want to see that movie. Can I say that again? Wow. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So what I'm saying is if you don't hear your favorite movie in my top five doesn't mean that I I, I hate your movie is is my point. It was this is a hard list. Yeah, it is. Very hard list. All right. So starting with number five, since you're since you're the guest of honor, what's your number five? Okay. I chose this movie because of the director, Christopher Nolan. Ah, and because, I know where you're going. And because of the person who's going to be the, the lead star, Tom Hardy. I know where you're going with this movie. Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Yeah, oh, that's going to be amazing. Okay. That's going to be a great movie. Yes. It's uh, historically, if at all you've you, you studied about World yeah. War II, it was the Battle of France. Right. Mm-hmm. The British, the Belgium, and the French troops got, yeah, it's got, be an uh, movie. got stuck on the beach. They were surrounded by the Germans. They were going to be massacred. But a fantastic miracle occurred. I, I, I'm getting chills now with you saying that. I predict this movie. Now I didn't make my list, but I predict this movie will be the most affecting war movie since Saving Private Ryan. No, really? I think it's going to be the. It it will rank with Saving Private Ryan, with Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, yeah, my goodness. which I haven't seen yet. And with I want Dunkirk. To. Well, I'll tell you, Saving Private Ryan. You know how they say sometimes movies can transcend being a movie? Well, it set the bar. It Well, it also was the first movie that made me open my eyes and could say war is not glorious. Oh, it's well, necessary it's... sometimes, mm-hmm. but there's no glory. I mean, there's just people dying indiscriminately. And when they hit that beach in Saving Private Ryan, you could be the fastest, most athletic, best sharpshooter in the Army. It didn't matter. You could just get mowed you down. Wanna know, you want to know the, yeah. the line that sticks in your head for that scene? What's that? Well, do you feel lucky? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah. you're lucky if you lived that right. day on that beach. Yeah. Yeah. There was it's luck, that simple. Luck or providence yeah. had so much more to do with it than ability. Yeah. So anyway, Absolutely. all right. Well, that's a, that's a really interesting yeah. choice. So, and you changed that one at the last I minute. I did because what I. What was your previous fit? Skull Island. Ah, Kong <laughs> Skull Island. That one's going to be a DVD movie for me. I think that that's, I think that they're actually, for a change, going to do a King Kong movie right well they've made him bigger and badder well yeah Yeah. and you know what peter jackson i had such high hopes when he did kong and then he put him sitting on a frozen pond in central park and i was like what What are you doing goodness name are you doing peter yeah he should be rampaging and stepping on people and pulling down the l yeah well he was trying to make it more of a love story although i did love the island parts of peter jackson oh it was great the island especially when the big 
the the overgrown insects yeah. and worms and all that was Ew, good stuff. The, when the, it eats that dude's head, the, sp- ah. the spiders. Duh. Yeah, that was Andy Circus who got his head he yeah. his head eaten. If I remember right. Okay, my number five is, and this is my risky one, but I have to see it in the theater. All right, Valerian and the City of a Thousand I've, Planets. Yes, I've heard a lot about this. Okay, so there's two reasons I want to see this. Well, one reason mainly. And they both involve the director. Luke Besson is great, directing it. Great director. He's adapting it from a French comic book. And it's the 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 next movie since Fifth Element we have for See, him to do another Fifth I'm Element. that's what I'm worried about. Yeah? Because I'm not a Fifth Element oh, lover. I'm a huge Fifth Element I'm not fan. a Fifth Element lover. I, uh, it's all right. Wow. I'm not. And look, it had Bruce Willis. It had Scarlet. Uh, no. Was it, it Scarlet? No, it had no. Mila. Oh, yeah, Milo Jojo. I mean, come on. Yeah, I yeah. mean, those are two favorites of mine, but it was just... You just, just didn't do it for you? Yeah. Chris Tucker just didn't do yeah. it to Well, me. I loved... Have, have you seen Fifth Element, Zach? I've seen it once. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, it, it didn't was, do it for him either. Well, to me, the reason I loved it and why so many other people loved it, it was like a live-action heavy metal. Oh, okay. Right? Well, I can understand that. Yeah, it, it's like the heavy metal magazine. Uh, and this is... He's adapting... Another comic or a comic book, Luke Besson. If you don't know, does amazing stuff. Yeah, uh, Transporter. And, yeah. So, well, yeah, he does just Lucy. Well, he did Lucy. Yeah, he's done a lot of crazy stuff. I'm just really excited. Like, I'm hoping. I don't want it to be a copy of Fifth Element, but I'm hoping for me personally that it'll recapture that. When I saw Fifth, Fifth Element, Element, you know what I kept wondering? What I kept wondering when the guys from. Uh, the Mario Brothers were going to show up. The the blue dudes really walking down the, uh, <laughs> All right. the hallway. So where? Wow. See, because almost everybody I know loves Fifth, fifth Element. <laughs> I didn't like. Wow. It. Okay. Fair enough. All right. All right, Dave. Well, Jeez. do you have? Did you do a list, Zach? I did not. Did Jeez. you at least come up with a number one? Uh, you got to have a number one when we get to the number one. I guess Justice League. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Oh well. Hold your fire. <laughs> Hold your powder, Zach. Yeah. That's what the governor tells Dave sometimes. Yeah. Hold your powder, Dave. Yes. Hold your powder. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. but not fast enough. All right. Okay. Do you, you, do you have a secret hotline from the governor? I don't. Okay. I should. Like a little red bat phone? They, they know how to get a hold of me, though. Okay. All right. What's your number four, Dave? Thor Ragnarok. All right. I'm, that that came so close and you to making know why? my list. You want to know why I got it Doctor there? Strange is in it? Doctor Strange and the Hulk. Yeah, that's I. I didn't and the know the Hulk till is going to be playing a huge part in it. I didn't know till yesterday on your show that uh, that Doctor Strange was supposed to be. Well, in that's it. because you haven't seen Doctor Strange I know. the I'm, movie I'm yet. I'm losing geek points. I'm trying to get them back. I'm losing. I know I didn't see Doctor Strange. I'm confessing. I want to see it. If, if I could have made it to the movies to see it, I would have. I would just tell you that, at, uh, and it's it's not going to be a spoiler for you because you, it's been so long now. Yeah. But. Uh, it's Thor talking to Doctor Strange in the the scene, one of the oh, additional one of the scenes. Singer scenes. Yeah, and like I what I like is that yeah, that Strange gave him a uh, a beer mug that kept refilling itself. He would Loved finish that. his beer, beer and he put it down; and it would fill back up. I, again. I got to see Doctor Strange. And uh, he says he starts talking about Odin. And he says this is about finding your father. He said yes, and he says, "Well, let's go." Yeah, and that's how it is. So you're gonna have the Hulk and Doctor Strange. Yes, and absolutely. As, as we talked about yesterday on your show, Dave. Dave Ellswick Show, Monday through Friday, 2 to 6, 96.5 FM, The Answer. Did you like that? Like how I Yeah, you did there? good. That's a uh, nice bridge. Yeah. Um, the reason that Thor and Hulk were not in Captain America Civil War is because they're off in Asgard right now. They're fighting. They're fighting. As we speak. Yeah, I want to see I want to see uh, Hulk take down some frost giants and some, uh, <laughs> and some <laughs> trolls. It's going to be cool. Yeah. Now, there's a comic book. Smash! There's a comic book. Yeah, Smash! There's a there's a there's an animated movie and I think a comic book storyline where Loki takes over the Hulk and uses it and I hope that doesn't isn't what no, happens. No, I the movie. don't want that. All right. So anyway, my number four. Yes. And this is another somewhat risky one, but I'm a I'm a big fan of the series, and I love westerns and I love sci-fi and fantasy. The Tower. Dark, Dark Tower. I was going to say the Dark yeah, Tower. Yeah, Dark Tower made my number four. Interesting choice of the main uh, was Idris Elba. Yes, as but I think it'd be great. Slinger. Now you know, and, and, yeah. and you do know that yeah. this will have nothing to do with the books. This is picking up after the books. I finished. did not know that. Yes. Oh, interesting. because they don't want to have to make eight movies, right? 
So they're going to start it after uh, it's over. Remember, I it see, says I've been avoiding he anything always about it. he always starts a new quest, right? Yeah, this will be the new quest. The interesting. Well, I'm I. You know, do you know what though? Roland is the name of the character in the books, and Stephen King. You know who he flag. Thinks, you know who he Roland thinks, Flag. Get well, it right. Well, no, Flag is the enemy. I okay. Yeah, Roland is the uh, the actual gunslinger okay, okay yeah flag has many names actually flag see what what the dark tower does is it brings all of stephen king's books, books together. together into one universe so flag the bad guy actually shows up in a bunch of his yes. different books he was the main bad guy in the stand and yeah. the best bad guy that king ever came up with. yeah so i i did not know that but did you know who stephen king based roland on originally john wayne mm, clint eastwood from the spaghetti western that's pretty close yep it's pretty close Yep, that's man with no him. name. Yeah, that's who he based him on. Okay, so I'm looking for. I did not see. I tried to avoid spoilers. Mm-hmm. I did not know that uh, it was. It was. Well, I think from, I. Sh- I don't yeah. think that's a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. That's just to tell no. you that if you're going yeah. to think that you're going to see the books, you're done. You're not. No, it's not a spoiler. It's good to know. All right, you're number three, buddy. Matthew McConaughey is in the Dark Tower. Is he? Is he? Well, he's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. Yeah, he's the bad yeah, guy. Yeah, the preacher or whatever. All right. Number three. Yeah, Justice League. Number three is Justice League, which is is possibly Zach's number one. Now I gotta say Justice League because I grew up with DC before I even touched Marvel. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm six, I'm going to be sixty four. All yeah. right, yeah. So Justice League was around a long time before the Avengers were, and right. I really liked the Justice League. Right. Well. Do you remember who the Justice League's first villain was in the comics? The oh, one that no. brought them back together? No, I do not. Or they brought them all together? Starro the Conqueror, the giant starfish. Oh, wow. That's how they, and they <laughs> the beat him. The giant starfish. I yeah, do remember that. It was in a, I don't think it was Brave and the Bold. It might have been Brave and the Bold. It, was, it wasn't It was actually, Justice League came later. This team up happened in a, I, I'm losing geek points by not remembering the exact okay. issue. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, they ended up. Like, because comics used to go out of their way to teach you science, mm-hmm. and they beat him by, like, pouring, like, flour and something else on him and, and coming up with some scientific reasoning, because Barry Allen is a scientist, right? He's a CSI. He's a police scientist. Yes. So he was the one that would always come up with this. Him and Batman would come up with scientific ways to beat beat people. So that's your number three, huh? That's my number three. I'm looking forward to Justice it. Justice League. I want to stress again. That I think that DC has a, a chance to totally turn around their cinematic universe with Justice League oh. and Wonder Woman. Okay. So, what's it, your number three? You want my number three? Yeah. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Woman Wonder Woman. <laughs> Looks great. Uh, I think Gal, is it Godot or Godot? Godot. Godot. That's what I understood. I think she's going to be a fantastic Wonder Woman. Well, you know, I she's just so physical in yeah. her acting because, look, she was a member of the IDF, the Israeli yeah. Defense Forces. And, because she's Israeli. Yeah, everybody serves. Yes. Yeah, in the... I, I think that she could... Here's... In the trailer for Wonder Woman, here's where I feel like they've captured the essence of Wonder Woman. Okay. Because I think a lot of people struggle to get Wonder Woman, right? She's not just a bikini babe. You know, she's not just a female Superman. She's, no, she's beautiful, thing. but she's, she's a strong woman. Well, here's where it captures Wonder Woman, in my uh, opinion, there's that scene in the trailer where she's like in some uh, like fancy dress party. Yes. And she's walking, looking amazing in her fancy dress. And then it cuts to her back and there's a sword, the sword in, it, in, yeah. in, the, in the back. Right. And that's Wonder Woman because she'll come in diplomatically and she'll come in and try to broker peace through, you know, beauty. But she's and got all. a gings but, and a knife. But she will whoop your butt. <laughs> She will straight whoop Slice your butt. Slice you and dice you. If she needs to. That's exactly right. So, uh, I, you know, and of course, uh, Chris Pine is playing Steve Trevor. Yep. Uh, Steve Trevor is, I, I like that character. So did, and, you see, did you see who was playing her mother? No, I didn't. Robin Wright. Oh, okay. I saw, I know that her, I saw the scene where her mom's like jumping across the beach and it looks like the bullets going yeah. towards her and all that. So, but I'll tell you, almost everybody universally agrees that one of the best scenes from the justice or from the dawn of justice, Batman V Superman movie was when Batman's about to get fricasseed by uh, Doomsday, mm-hmm. and and the the heat visions, hit, and all of a sudden somebody drops down and blocks it, and you assume it's Superman. Yeah, and then when the smoke clears, it's Wonder Woman, and that theme plays. Man, play that theme, Zach. You got it. 
Now, here it is. Here it is. It's good stuff. Oh. Gotta love this. I get chill bumps on this. I know, this. every time. She's, I really I do. Mean, I get chill bumps on They're it. setting up Wonder Woman great. Perfectly. So, yeah, so uh, agree, you know, so Wonder, Woman made Wonder, both, Woman. Wonder Woman made both of our lists. Okay, you're, yes. You're, well, I know she's on your list somewhere. Yes, she is. Okay, my number three. All right, number All right, two. What's your number two? Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. Volume 2. Yeah, going to be a fantastic movie. Would that make your top five, Zach? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Going to be a fan. I'm shocked it didn't make mine. That we were sitting and talking to Mitch yesterday, Brightweiser, who is the man who's responsible for Drax. Yeah, I didn't even know that till yesterday. Mitch Brightweiser, local comic book artist, him and his wife Elizabeth, uh, they he's, they both worked for Marvel and do image stuff, and they he's worked on Captain America, et cetera. He came up with the design for what we know as Drax. Because Drax yeah. used to have a different design. Yes. He came up with that sort of tattooish, tattoo-ish Drax mm-hmm. uh, that, that is, and, and gets no credit for it. No. You know, that's one of the downfalls of working for the major For the big comic, boys. But yeah, they, they own everything. But uh, you yeah. think they would at least throw in a little Easter in fact, egg. In like, fact, when I watched yeah. the, uh, the trailer, the last trailer they came out with, the part where uh star lord and uh and drax yeah, are like in that uh, they're they're in that uh i don't know they're, they're like talking it's, to it's it's like a therapist uh, alien session. yeah like yeah. they're talking to the alien and she tells star lord that she's picking up his feelings she says yeah i'm feeling good she says, no 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 you want to have sex yeah. and it's with her <laughs> and he points over to uh and drax starts laughing. Laughing. and, and drax starts laughing and he says, we found out about your deepest yeah. secret. He's like, look at your that. face. Me, yeah. me, me, me. I loved yeah. it. I just yeah. made no, me Drax crack is up. classic. Mm-hmm. How do you take... Batista's great in that part. Yep. Well, how do you take a character that's as straight-laced as Drax, Drax and make him the comic relief? How do you do that? That's, uh, a, that's great. great writing. Yes. It you was know, really well yeah. done. I, it makes me just smile just yeah. talking about no, it. No, it's funny. It's like, do me, do me. Be that like, in between yeah. the little go- go- Groot, Groot, you know, yeah. running around. Groot's got the, uh, in the in the trailers, he's got the uh, the blow it all up button. Yeah. And he's running through the little, yeah. yeah. No, it's I'm be Groot. Cool. Yeah. You know, and then when he gets on, he gets down and, and takes on that guy and yeah. he's takes a root and drops yeah. him and everything he's slapping pretty, around look, it's pretty good Groot don't play no all right i'm gonna give out my number two and then we're all gonna right. take a break and come back with our all number right. ones see i'm learning how to do a tease you're Dave. doing good thanks buddy number two what's your number two justice league all right yeah so uh i'm definitely excited and hopeful i will say this though ever her, though however if they drop the ball with justice league i'm gonna stop trying to defend the, the dc movies yeah if they I drop agree. the ball if they drop the ball, because so far all of them have had good scenes, but overall they haven't been what I want to see in a DC movie. All right. You know, it's almost like too DC. much typically in a DC movie. Well, they're also, it's like they're afraid for their, for their characters to be bright. Comics are four color bright, you know, superhero comics anyway. Yeah. And it's like, they're afraid of that, you know? And like we were talking about yesterday on your show, Dave, DC has, redone its comic book line to be more optimistic and bright mm-hmm. and they're outselling marvel like hotcakes right now so almost say almost say. is trump a superhero is trump a superhero he's got the super blarney i'm just he can saying blarney. man i'm just saying that'd be good he can persuade people yep uh okay uh and he's and he's got the uh the superpower of pressing on and not really caring what people think about him. <laughs> you got that right. He's got some thick skin. My kind of guy. All right, so we are going to cut to a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll do our number ones. I'm going to throw some love at a sponsor. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME. Or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located, 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for, for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program, that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First-time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase 
of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 51224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane plays sent you. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone, this is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The Die is Cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk radio a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. I'm joined by my buddy and massive radio legend, who veteran who has forgotten more about radio than I'll ever know, Dave Ellswick, who's also just a darn cool guy. Can I get can I give you some also rands before I name my number one? Yeah. All right. All right. When we're counting down our top five most anticipated movies of twenty seventeen. Yeah. We've gone through our top four, so now we're down to our number one. Yeah, now these are ones that didn't, didn't make the didn't list, make the but cut. I, I do will go see. Sure, go for it. Resident Evil. Yeah. Cars three. Okay. Transformers. Yeah, I'll watch that just to watch it. Power Rangers. Okay, I got to stop you there. That's like Zach's big movie. Yes, it is. I could care. It's, it's just not even on my radar. Quit at all. hating, man. Quit I'm not hating. hating. <laughs> I just I'm just pump Power Rangers, but I know a lot of people are looking forward. You're gonna to come it. with me. Okay, I'll go with you. Come with me. Yeah, I'll okay. go with you. Aliens right. Covenant. Yep. And uh, Skull Island. Skull Island. Kong Skull Island. No, they didn't make it, but they're on my list to go see. I'm, I'm tentatively. Uh, hopeful for alien covenant because it's ridley scott and it got the aliens yeah it. it's got the aliens in it ever i loved alien and i loved aliens ever since i none of them have totally scratched my i like prometheus the, a lot of people didn't like it i, I didn't liked hate it. it i liked it i didn't hate it it had some cool stuff going on in it but it didn't totally blow me away but it was a thinking man's show i liked a lot of it and it, they were talking about religion and faith a lot of and stuff science. about faith yeah a lot of stuff in there about faith right. i didn't hate it number one movie now what's your number one i absolutely will go on a thursday to see it yeah i know what it is wonder woman wonder what play it again zach absolutely i just think that this is going to be the movie of the year it's big now here's the thing i actually went i what did i tell you when i emailed you that zach i did that that sound clip for dave because i knew what wonder woman was his number i one. love i i i liked it when it was done on tv yeah i've liked you just, you it like the character i've liked it as a comic book although i i'm wondering about the transparent airplane thing they don't do that they, anymore i hope not i no, hope she they don't. flies now okay she yeah. travels normally <laughs> yeah but uh yeah i i just think it's going to be a great movie all right well i think it's going to be great it's not my number one it's my number three but i'm really looking forward to it now um I'm gonna. Uh, I'll give a. I'm about to give my number one. I'll give a couple of mys that didn't make it. Okay. But I would have loved to put them on if it was a top ten. Okay. 
Uh, but I will say, I mentioned this on your show yesterday. One of the movies I'm like, no, don't do this movie is Blade Runner 2049. I'm I'm I, all about no, it. No, leave it. That's Blade Runner is a master. I don't want to know what happened next. No, I think it's going to be great. Even if they cloned Harrison Ford and had him at the same age he was in the original. I don't he's, want to he's see this He's not. Movie. I mean, I'll watch it. But I, it's like, yeah, it's such a great movie. I don't want to know what happened next. I, Part of I do. the ambiguous ending that I want. Okay, anyway. It's going to be a good movie. Yes, don't get me is. wrong. But I'm like, leave the storyline. All right. So some movies that didn't make my top five but very easily could have were Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. Uh, I've seen every Spider-Man in the theater. I'll probably see this one. Th- Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Logan, which I'm yeah, deeply... Yeah, that looks good. I'm deeply, deeply impressed that Logan is being risky with how they're putting him in the future. He's older. Professor X. Is and he will be rated R. It'll be rated R. Uh, and then, of course, Thor Ragnarok was on my uh, was on my list that could have made it. That was hard to narrow down to five. My number one, Dave. All right. And I just, it, there's no right way this cannot be number I'm one. I'm trying to think in my mind. Star Wars Episode Eight. Oh, well, yeah. Star yeah, Wars. That's, that's, that's one, one that I'm interested in seeing as well. But I see every... Star Wars. This Star Wars to me is the very definition of the movie you have to see in the theater. Well, yeah, you right? do. So I every since the prequels came out, and 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 I was you know uh, like in junior high and elementary school when the original Star Wars movies came out, and even younger. So I I didn't see all of them in the theater first round, but I've caught them all in the theater since then. But since the prequels started coming out, I've caught every. Star Wars movie in the theater three or four times, so I it's just see I've seen every one of them in the big screen. Well, I did screen. eventually, but not like I didn't. My for whatever reason, I was like Star Wars came out in seventy seven, right? Mm-hmm. I was five, so for whatever reason, my parents didn't take me to see it. I'm not mad about it. They no. just didn't. Uh, I saw Jedi was the first one I saw in the theater when it actually ran. See, I saw. I mean, New Hope which yeah. is known now i was 24 when it came out yeah so yeah i would have been i would have been totally up in there so what was your what was your movie is it is it what's your Wonder Woman? One, zach i really don't have one i'm not sure you said justice throw League. out a yeah, couple but, that you gotta see no. man i know power rangers of course all right they have to have a new theme song though <laughs> they don't... can't have that cartoon theme song they just that won't cut it it was not, not for, for a not mass for, appeal no, that won't happen all right anyway Okay, so uh, <laughs> next week will be a pre-recorded show. Actually, I'm going to be out of town, but where are I've you got, going uh, for work? I got to go to Wisconsin in the oh, middle of winter. I thought maybe you were going to the inauguration or something. No, no, I'll, I'll be in Wisconsin uh, for work. But uh, I got a pre-recorded interview with the Neil Adams. Oh, cool! The Neil Adams, the Neil Adams of comic book fame. But we're actually going to be talking about his geology research. He's got a lot of theories that are really interested in talking to him about theology. Um, and and Zay, Dave, thanks so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. You're always welcome I had a great time. On. Yeah, I'm so glad always you came Always have on. a good time. And I always love going on your show. Uh, I got to give out my bad joke of the week. Uh-oh. I apologize in advance. All right. Did you hear about the chicken that crossed the road? No. It was poultry in motion. <laughs> Poultry emotion. <laughs> Dave, Poultry Zach's... emotion. All right, we'll catch everybody next week All on right, Shame anyway. Plays, Geek Talk Radio. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane